Hi, year 12. So the questions in this video are only uh, from the SL end of year assessment. Um, so these are not for HL students. Question 6 of the SL paper. The length of a side of a cube is 10 plus or minus 0.3 centimetres. What is the uncertainty in the volume of the cube? Well, we know that if we have a cube with side of length L, then the volume is L cubed. Um, and we know that if we are raising a value to a power to find the uncertainty, the percentage uncertainty in that value, is we find the percentage uncertainty in the quantity that we are raising to a power and then we multiply by the value of the power. So the percentage uncertainty in the volume is going to be three lots of the percentage uncertainty in the length. So the first thing we need to do is find the percentage uncertainty in the length. We know that the absolute uncertainty is plus or minus 0.3 over the 10 centimetres multiplied by 100 to turn it into a percentage. That's 3%. So there's a 3% uh, uncertainty in the length and therefore the volume uncertainty is 3 lots of that, so it's 9%. Uh, and then obviously we need to calculate the actual value. So we do L cubed, we get 1000 centimetres cubed plus or minus the 9%, um, and that works out to be 90, so you should have chosen plus or minus 90 centimetres cubed for question 6. The next one that was only on the SL paper was question 12. Um, so, in question 12, the variation with time t of the acceleration a of an object is shown. Um, the IB mark scheme, I disagree with on this one we know that acceleration is change in speed over time. So if we do acceleration multiplied by time, we get the change in speed. And obviously that's going to be the area under the graph here to give us change in velocity. Um, so I separated out into two sections. So section one, I've got a rectangle, one by six. And then two, I've got a triangle, so half times base times height. So we've got four on the bottom, two along the side, so a half times four times two is four. Add those together and you get your 10 meters per second. Next was question 18. Uh, this one was actually very easy. It's just one that you need to remember. A longitudinal wave moves through a medium um, and you need to talk about the displacement of the medium and the direction of the wave, um, so the direction of energy transfer. Um, and you just need to remember that longitudinal waves the particles all move parallel to the medium um, and that the wave is also running parallel. Uh, so there you go, that was 18, that was an easy one hopefully. 24, uh, you've got the graph showing the variation of current with potential difference voltage um, and then it asks for the resistance of the filament when the potential difference across it is 6 volts. Now, obviously, we know that resistance is voltage over current. We have current over voltage, so the gradient is 1 over resistance in this case. So the gradient of the graph, um, finding the reciprocal of the gradient of the graph, sorry, will give you the resistance at any point in time. So I went to 6 volts, I had a look, I drew a tangent to the graph at that point, um, chose two points. Obviously, it's a non-calculated paper, um, and so you need to just approximate. Um, I went for calling it a difference of six, roughly, and calling it a difference uh, of nine, roughly, here as well. Um, you're not going to get the perfect answer, but you are going to get the right ballpark by doing that. Um, and then that allows your maths to be a little bit easier, and you will get yourself 600 ohms. And so obviously it's going to be the 670 ohms that you should be choosing. Then in 30, a small object is attached to a string and rotated in a circle of constant radius in a horizontal plane, so it's circular motion. Um, the tension in the string is measured for different speeds v. So the tension is obviously providing the centripetal force. Um, so I've sketched it out so you can see tensions going in. Um, I know that I can equate that force value to mv squared over r because that's my centripetal force equation. Um, I can write that as T equals M over R multiplied by V squared to get it in the form of Y equals MX. 
Now, if I want a straight line graph, I want a constant gradient. The mass of the object is constant. The radius is constant. It's the speed that's being changed. So therefore, if this is y, this is m, and this is x, to get a straight line graph, I need to plot t against v squared.